hereby call this meeting of the Governmental Operations Committee to order. I'm uh, Council Member Ben Kalos. I chair the Governmental Operations Committee. You can tweet me at Ben Kalos. Uh, this is our fiscal 2016 preliminary budget and preliminary mayor's management report hearing. I'd like to uh, thank uh, my uh, colleague, uh, Council Member Stephen Matteo, who has a perfect attendance record and uh, always joins us uh, bright and early at these hearings at uh, exactly on time, if not before so. So I just wanted to recognize that. I'd also like to thank our uh, Finance Division Unit Head, uh, John Russell, and congratulations on his new title since our last finance hearings, as well as our uh, Finance Analyst, Kenny Grace, as well as our Committee Counsel, David Seitzer, and uh, Analyst, Lori Wen. Today we'll hear from agencies that perform various citywide services. The committee will review their financial plans, budget proposals, performance measures, and other operational issues. The agencies that will testify today are the Financial Information Services Agency, FISA, Office of Payroll Administration, OPA, Department of Records and Information Services, fondly known as DORIS, Office of Administrative Tax Appeals or Tax Commission, Office of Administrative Trials and Hearings, also known as Oath, the Law Department, the Department of Citywide Administration, Cert Administrative Services, also known as DCAS, the Community Boards, and the Board of Elections. After which, the general public will have an opportunity to weigh in some eight hours from now. <laughs> in particular, the committee will, would like to focus on operational efficiencies that generate cost savings, efforts to reduce reliance on outside contractors, and the management of capital contracts, including best practices, so as to avoid cost overruns. With regard to the preliminary mayor's management report, we will discuss the relationship between agency budgets and agency performance, and what steps will be taken to improve agency performance. We will evaluate current and proposed initiatives, and what we can expect in terms of return on our investments, Coming from my background in finance, I believe any time we are investing additional funds in anything, we should be seeing improvements. Uh, ultimately, the goal of the committee throughout these hearings is to ensure that the city taxpaying taxpayers are getting the best bang for their buck. First off, we'll hear from uh, Roy Mogolinski acting director of both Financial Information Services Agency and the Office of Payroll Administration. Welcome. FISA controls and coordinates data processing functions and operations for the city's payroll, accounting and purchasing systems, management of the citywide financial management system, FMS, generates and distributes reports for accounting and budget oversight and provides online access to budgetary related data for use by city managers and others. FISA's proposed budget for fiscal year 2016 totals $104.9 million, including personal services funded, uh, funding of $48.6 million to support 459 full-time positions. The office, office of Payroll Administration is also responsible for the distribution of payrolls, the accounting for payrolls, administration of payroll deductions, check distribution services, maintenance of the integrity and accuracy of the payroll management system, PMS, and supporting the development and implementation of PMS. As proposed budget for fiscal year 2015 total, 2016 totals 27.7 million, including personnel, personal services funding of 16.2 million to support 203 full-time positions. During today's hearing, we will examine various aspects of both agencies' budgets and discuss the operations and upkeep of several city-wide IT systems, including FMS, the City Financial Management System, City Time, the City's Time Piping System, NICAPS, the City's Human Resources Database, and the Payroll Management System. We would also like to hear about efforts to convert consultant positions to city positions, as well as discuss details about the plan to co-locate FISA with OPA. We look forward to your testimony. Um, and before we have a practice for uh, other government agencies of asking them to uh, take an affirmation, so if all who will be providing testimony or responding to any questions can uh, raise their right hand and uh, turn on their mics, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth before this committee and respond honestly to council member questions? I do. Everyone else, I need to hear from you too. I do. I do. I do. Let the record reflect all folks sitting at the table have said I do, and without 
Uh, anything further, please provide your testimony. Thank you. Good morning, Chair Kalos and members of the Committee on Governmental Operations. My name is Roy Mogolansky, and I am Acting Executive Director of the Financial Information Services Agency, known as FISA. I'm joined at the table this morning by Laura Badamo, Assistant Executive Director and Deputy General Counsel, Edward Fitzpatrick, the Deputy Executive Director for Administration, Valu Pillai, the Deputy du Executive Director for Shared Systems, and Peter Reddy, the Deputy Executive Director for Financial Systems. The portion of the Mayor's preliminary budget that pertains to FISA will allow it to maintain its current levels of service. The budget provides FISA with the resources it needs to support the citywide financial, payroll, human resources, and timekeeping applications, which it maintains for city officials who utilize them to carry out their charter-mandated activities related to budgeting, financial planning, accounting, procurement, payroll, pension, and personnel functions. FISA provides services to various entities through, through the operation and maintenance of major information systems, such as the payroll management system, known as PMS, the financial management system, known as FMS, the pension payroll management system, PPMS, the New York City automated personnel system, known as NICAPS, and CityTime. FISA provides technical expertise and support primarily to the Office of Management and Budget, the Office of the Controller, the Office of Payroll Administration, the Mayor's Office of Contract Services, the Office of Labor Relations, and the Department of Citywide Administrative Services. FISA ensures citywide system access and provides technical assistance to all agencies processing transactions in FMS, PMS, PPMS, NICAPS, and CityTime. Today, the systems that FISA supports are utilized by tens of thousands of users in the performance of their duties on behalf of the people of our city. The Financial Management System, or FMS, supports the base functions required of a citywide budget and accounting system. FMS processes data for inclusion in the city's financial plans, the budget, the controller's annual statements, and all required tax reports. In calendar year 2014, FMS generated approximately 690,000 disbursements, valued at approximately $45 billion. FISA would like to report a positive trend toward greater use of electronic funds transfer, or EFT, by vendors and other payees receiving payments from the city. In calendar year 2010, approximately 41% of the city's total disbursements were made using EFT. Today, the EFT percentage has grown to approximately 69%. This greater use of EFT is due, a number, is due to a number of complementary initiatives, such as legislation by the City Council, which makes EFT the preferred method of payment by agencies, a nominal paper check fee that is generated over $1,400,000 for the city since the end of fiscal year 2011, and aggressive vendor enrollment activities. FISA, working with DCAS and MOX, continues to implement procurement improvement initiatives. A current effort is the rollout of online order processing for selected contracts. FISA, working with MOX, is upgrading the pay information portal, known as the PIP, to include a new feature that allows users to self-identify their businesses as veteran-owned, minority-owned, women-owned, or as a worker cooperative. FISA, working with the Office of the Controller, continues to implement initiatives to improve vendor interactions with the city. The initiatives currently in progress are the development of e-signature functionality for W-9 form submission and a set of usability improvements to the payee information portal. The debt management system is the official repository of de data pertaining to bonds issued by New York City and the Transitional Finance Authority. The application is used by investment banks, bond council, and city employees. The DMS application includes over 100 years of historical data. FISA completed the initial implementation and continues to maintain the application and imply, apply enhancements as prioritized by DMS stakeholders. An, enhance, an enhancement is underway to DMS to include bonds issued by the New York City Municipal Water Finance Authority. The Payroll Management System, or PMS, is the computerized application used to produce the city's payroll. PMS processes over 9 million payments for the city's workforce annually by running over 300 pay cycles per year 
that produce payrolls valued at approximately $28 billion. FISA is working on several initiatives to move non-payroll functionality out of the payroll management system as part of the strategy to update the 30-year-old mainframe base system on which PMS runs. In the past year, union dues assignment processing and contractual salary increase in processing has moved from PMS into NICAPS, and police department timekeeping has been fully moved into city time. During the coming year, additional functionality to calculate the payment of uniform allowance will be processed in NICAPS and new web-based entry and inquiry screens will be developed. The pension payroll management system is used for producing payments to New York City retirees. For calendar year 2014, PPMS produced over 3.8 million payments for approximately 317,000 New York City recipients by running close to 180 pay cycles valued at approximately $22 billion. FISA manages the distribution of retiree checks, 1099 forms, and quarterly statements to pensioners. The New York City Automated Personnel System, or NICAPS, is a citywide human resources and benefit system which processes transactions for city employees. In the past year, work was completed to move Department of Education employees into NICAPS. FISA is now working with CUNY to implement the employees of the community colleges into NICAPS. In addition, NICAPS, NICAPS processes health benefits for all New York City retirees. The City Time System is a unified and automated timekeeping system which inter interfaces with the city's payroll management system to support accurate time and attendance records and payroll calculations. FI FISA continues to be on target to meet the objectives set forth in the FISA board resolution of June 2011, which calls for replacement of consultants with city staff. From the time FISA assumed responsibility for the implementation and maintenance of city time, the number of consultants on the project has been reduced from 71 to six with a resultant savings of over $5 million per year. Overall, FISA has tremendously reduced its reliance on consultants. In fiscal year 2011, FISA had 194 consultants. It currently has 30 consultants in total. FISA continues its efforts to reduce these numbers even further. FISA continues to provide the Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications, or DOIT, with data on citywide job postings for the Open Data website. FISA also provides the New York City Controller's Office with payroll, contract, and payment data for Checkbook 2.0 website. We continue to actively provide support as they design additional components of Checkbook. FISA staffing for fiscal year 2015 and fiscal year 2016 is an authorized 459 employees. FISA's total January plan budget allocation for fiscal year 16 is $105 million, $49 million for personal services, and $56 million for other than personal services. And at this point, I'd be happy to answer any questions the Council may have. Uh, if you would not mind, in your joint role over Financial Information Services Agency and the Office of Payroll Administration, if you don't mind, following your testimony for FISA with your testimony for OPA, we can make sure we address both of the, uh, both of our questions for both agencies at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, as there is a close nexus between the agencies as indicative of the fact that one person is able to oversee both. Okay. So we'd like me to, to read my testimony for OPA now. Okay. Um, I'd like to say hello again to Chair Kalos and, and the, and the Gov Committee on Governmental Operations. Um, my name is still Roy Mogolansky, and I am the Acting Executive Director of OPA as well as FISA. Um, joining me today from OPA, who are, you can gather around, are Mohammed Afiz, the Deputy Executive Director of Administration, Neil Matthew, the Deputy Executive Director of Payroll Operations, and Jerry Stepanek, the Deputy Executive Director of Systems and Support. Let the record I'm reflect that the uh, Office of FISA and OPA now outnumber the City Council in this hearing. And, and I hope you forgive me, but I've been on the job a little bit over three weeks, so I figure it's, it's good to have some support here, people who actually know more of the details than I do. Um, the portion of the Mayor's preliminary budget that pertains to OPA will allow OPA to maintain its current levels of service. 
The budget provides OPA with the necessary resources to support employee and retiree payrolls, including the management and, re and reconciliation of the city's payroll bank accounts. In furtherance of its OPA, OPA maintains and enforces uniform payroll policies and procedures, coordinates payroll matters among city agencies, the New York City Housing Authority, and elected officials. OPA ensures the continued security, integrity, and effectiveness of the city's payroll systems, as well as compliance with requirements of federal, state, and city tax authorities, while using technology to the greatest possible advantage in support of its operations. The following divisions carry out much of the activity related to the core mission of OPA. OPA Payroll Operations manages the payroll check and direct deposit distribution to all city agencies. In calendar year 2014, over 9 million payments were made to active city employees. Over 7.7 .7 million of these were direct deposit payments, and over 1.7 million were paper checks. This reflects a direct deposit participation rate of 81.5%. OPA also funds 18 payroll-related bank accounts. In addition, OPA manages the retiree payroll distribution for the pension systems. In calendar year 2014, over 3.7 million payments were made to city retirees, over 3 million of these were direct deposit, and over 590,000 were paper checks. This reflects a direct deposit participation rate of 84%. Paper check stop payment notices and check replacements are processed by OPA. In calendar year 2014, 5,120 paper checks were replaced. The use of direct deposit is promoted by OPA. Toward that end, the agency partners with seven financial institutions in the free checking with direct deposit initiative. As part of its fiduciary responsibility, OPA is responsible for reporting wages, pension distributions, and withholding tax information to federal and state taxing authorities. These entities include the city, NYCHA, the New York City Municipal Water Finance Authority, the New York City Retirement System Pension Trust, and the New York City Retirement System Trust. OPA ensures the city complies with order deductions that have been served upon city employees. Some of these order deductions include child support, the Internal Revenue Service, tax levies repayments, agreements, creditor garnishment orders, higher education loan orders, and national medical support notices. OPA is responsible for collecting and remitting city employees' voluntary payroll deductions and data, including union dues, life insurance premiums, and political dues to internal and external entities. The city's commuter benefits program is administered by OPA. The expanded transit benefit program offers eligible employees the opportunity to use pre-tax and post-tax earnings to cover certain public transportation costs throughout the New York tri-state area. At the end of February 2015, more than 55,000 city employees were participating. In November 2014, the program added the premium metro card to the existing transit benefit options. The premium metro card is an annual unlimited ride metro card that is accepted wherever the 30-day unlimited ride metro card is accepted. OPA citywide system support services mission is to maintain and provide citywide agency support and training for use of OPA citywide systems, as well as support for the use of internal OPA systems used by OPA's payroll operations division. OPA is responsible for the business functionality address addressed by eight major citywide systems covering payroll, pension, and timekeeping functions. These systems include the payroll management system, the pension payroll management system, the workers' compensation system, city time, the city human resources management system, the W-2 Replacement and Correction System, the Welfare Benefit Annuity System, and E-Form slash E-Stubs. In addition to maintaining and ensuring that these systems meet business needs, OPA also provides support and help desk functions. This unit addresses agency questions and issues and disseminates information pertaining to OPA citywide systems. OPA's responsibilities cover a broad range of activities, including business analysis, requirements gathering, validating payroll results, data assurance for tax filings, and troubleshooting system business issues. OPA assesses and makes system update recommendations based on changes to over 180 union agreements, as well as legislative or other required business changes. 
an important function of OPA Support Services Division is its proactive agency outreach. This approach focuses on assisting agencies with correcting transactions, recommending business process changes, and communicating system updates to the user community. OPA also engages agencies to participate in software testing to ensure that software usability meets business needs. OPA has authorized full-time staffing levels of 203 for fiscal year 2015 and for fiscal year 2016. OPA's total January, total January plan budget allocation for fiscal year 2015 is $28.6 million, $17.1 million for personal services, and $11.5 million for other than personal services. For fiscal year 2016, the January budget allocation is $28.2 million, $16.7 million for personal services, and $11.5 million for other than personal services. Um, thank you, and I'll be happy to answer any Pfizer or OPA-related questions that you may have. Thank you all for joining us. I'd like to open up by just following up on uh, items from last year, which uh, may be before your time, but hopefully uh, with the great team you've got assembled here, you can address it. So last year, nearly $300 million were erroneously paid out to over 31,000 pensioners. OPA said the reason was due to a system test that failed. Last year, uh, OPA said that over 99% of that money was recovered. What is the current amount outstanding? What steps has OPA taken to recover the remaining money? And uh, what additional changes to the system have been made to make sure that this does not happen again? Um, I, I can answer that one. That's easy. We've recovered all the money. All the money has been um, repaid to the city. Um, my, if I may, my, my first responsibility as acting executive director is the integrity of the disbursements that are going out. Um, to that end, I've asked the staffs of both FISA and OPA to review all processes and procedures to see if there's any single points of failure, what can be done both electronically and or manually to make sure that um, errors like these don't happen again. Um, so that's the, f both agencies realize that's the first priority. We're reviewing all systems. Um, we had, after the incident last year, we had KPMG come in. Um, they are an, uh, an auditing and accounting firm. They brought in some special expertise on these kind of systems. They've made some recommendations um, for how we can do things better now and in the future. Um, and in addition, what I'd like to establish is, uh, I know DOI uses the term integrity controller, but I'd like to establish within FISA and OPA an integrity monitoring unit that would report directly to me, whose sole responsibility would be to monitor the processes that result in disbursements of funds and to make sure they're being followed correctly and the amounts going out are correct. And that's something um, I hope to implement in the near-term future. Is the new integrity unit reflected within the uh, fiscal year 16 budget proposal? It, it, it is, it's not. Um, however, it doesn't have to be a large unit personnel-wise. It can be one or two or three people, but there's, that would be their sole responsibility is to monitor the processes that are already in place. So it's not as if they would be putting new processes in place. We've established processes that should work properly. There is, there is electronic checks, there is human being checks, but this unit, this person's sole job would be to make sure that other people are following the procedures properly and they would report directly to me so they would have the authority to make sure that these things were done correctly. At what cost? I, again, I assume it minimal, minimal the, the cost of salary of one or two or three people. These would be city employees. 150,000, 300, are these uh, I, I would, civil if, if servants or? The, they, they, they would be civil servants, right. We're, we're reducing consultants wherever we have, so I wouldn't bring in consultants to do this. So I would say between two and $300,000. Uh, thank you. Electronic funds transfer utilization was 69% last year, uh, and you've testified that it hasn't grown over the last year. Uh, why not, and what plans do you have to improve it? Um, why not? I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, it seems like it would be easier, more convenient, safer for everyone to use it. Um, for 
payroll checks and pension checks, the participation rate is much higher. I believe it's over 80% in each of those cases. For city vendors, it's about 69%. Um, we do have ongoing outreach programs to try and get vendors to accept electronic funds transfer. There is a per check fee. It's $3.50 per paper check that we thought would dissuade some people from wanting paper, um, but they still, we are not legally allowed to mandate EFT so that if anybody requests a paper check, we, um, we have to supply it to them, but we are constantly hoping to get that number up. We have outreach programs, we have- Large number of one-time payments. The, the one-time payments um, drive that percentage down. People who think it's not worth the trouble to sign up for electronic funds transfer since they're only getting one check from the city or they assume they are. But, it, but it's something that we agree we will continue to try and increase the percentage of participation. Which seven financial institutions did you partner with for the free checking with direct deposit of initiative and how are you letting the, uh, the, 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 the receivers of the nine million payments you make a year um, aware that they can get a free checking account because of their direct deposit? Um, the seven institutions are Banco Popular, Carver Federal Savings Bank, Citibank, Flushing Bank, Habib American Bank, Neighborhood Trust Federal Credit Union, and Sterling National Bank. Um, and here too, we have a constant outreach to employees and pensioners to use um, electronic funds, trans direct deposit in their cases. Um, we are partnering with the Department of Consumer Affairs Office of, a Finan Office of Financial Empowerment to try and get people to open up. Uh, many, surprisingly, many of the city employees are unbanked. Um, so we have this program where if their check is deposited directly, they get free checking. Um, the Office of Financial Empowerment is reaching out to people as well to try and encourage them to open up bank accounts and to get um, the EFT, uh, the direct deposit checks made. Um, so we, we do have constant outreach programs. Um, the success rate, again, is over 80%, but we'd like to increase it. Can addition, uh, how are you, can any bank, uh, anyone representing a bank, anyone who currently banks with a bank watching this hearing right now have their institution participate? Uh, th is this open to everyone or is there um, any? I, the banks, and Mohammed, please correct me if I'm wrong, the banks have to, or Neil, have to apply. Uh, right. uh, yeah. Sorry. They have to be on the listing of the City Banking Commission in order to be able to participate. And so every single bank that's listed on the City Banking Commission has been offered to participate and? Yes. Then similarly, so I, 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 I have a bank account and uh, every month with my bank statement, they send me a, a whole list of offers. Um, is it possible to, when you mail a paper check to include a, a one pager saying these are the banks you can get free banking with? We actually do. Per periodically, we, we put a message on, on the, there's a, a memo line in checks, and we put rotating messages there, and one of them is um, the, use, please consider direct deposit, or something, to, I don't know the exact wording, but something, marketing direct deposit to employees. Um, and periodically we have outreaches to employees. Um, we, we talk to the personnel departments of all the city agencies. We give them literature to give to the employees to encourage direct deposit. Um, so we're, we're trying. Perfect. Uh, I, I, I do direct deposit, so to the extent that you can send me a copy of what that looked like, I, I'd love to be, I'd love to see it. And uh, as a person who banks with a TD Bank, I would also love to, have TD Bank added just so that I don't have to pay fees anymore either. Um, I'd love to get as many banks signed up and would be interested in working closely with you on that. Uh, it's great to see that in terms of city time, there was a commitment to reduce from 71 uh, consultants and uh, that number's actually dropped to six, which is uh, a great number. Um, however, last year it was uh, testified that you'd be going down 
to uh, five. So I guess the, the one question is just, you, you got very close to your goal, um, just what missed it, and is there a goal to reduce that headcount to zero and bring them all in, as well as uh, the, um, the 30 consultants that, that are left additionally? Yes, the goal is to reduce consultants to zero. Um, th that, I can't give you a time frame for that, but it's something we're actively working on. Those, the six remaining city time consultants are basically a lot of the work that they're being assigned will result in the, will, us being able to replace them with city employees. Um, OPA is down to zero consultants now. Um, FISA is at 30, but again, FISA a few years back had almost 200 consultants. So we're making steady progress in reducing consultants and, and the goal is to get them to zero. Is that, in, uh, you mentioned not being able to give a specific time frame, but is it in terms of ballpark, is it next year we'll have the same conversation or um, as in you think you'll be able to eliminate all the uh, outside contractors by next year? I, I, I can't promise you that. I don't want to make a false promise by saying we can get rid of them all in a year. Um, a lot of them do work on our systems that's very complex and are not easily replaced because of their skill set. Um, but I will commit to have a goal of being in sigil, single digits of total consultants by this time next year. That gives me a little bit of room to. Uh, and w are you currently working out of the municipal building or out of uh, 450 West 33rd? Well, FISA is based at 450 West 33rd Street. OPA is in actually in three locations right there. They're, right now, they're in a municipal building, they're in 2 Lafayette Street, and there's a component up at 450 West 33rd Street. However, OPA will be co-located with FISA, hopefully by the end of this calendar year, so that both agencies will be at 450 West 33rd Street. Since the agencies work so closely together, um, they, they work on different facets of the same system, um, I think that'll be a great benefit to both agencies to have them both physically located in the same place. What cost savings do you see with this co-location? Um, I don't have specific cost savings for the co-location, um, but there should be some efficiencies in that we, we will be sitting co in a co-located um, place and that the efficiencies of interactions between the, the two agencies should increase, but I don't have a specific number. With regard to uh, the, the expense budget, uh, um, in, in the capital budget, we can budget for things, and if we don't spend it, it relates to bonding that we ultimately don't end up taking. With regard to this expense budget, uh, it's limited. We have 77.7 .7 at this point uh, billion dollars. That's up from the 73 million that we had when I first got elected, uh, which is great. But um, one of the challenges is just that uh, any money we budget one place can't be spent in that year by another agency. And uh, FISA and OPA have a, uh, a history in, in the fiscal 2014 and fiscal uh, 2015 and, and now for fiscal year 2016, uh, budgeting with a surplus where you will actually have uh, more, more funding than you need based on previous uh, years. Um, can we expect a budget surplus in the coming year? And uh, can you estimate the current budget surplus and any places where we can actually make sure we're budgeting more accurately so that we can spend that money where we need it? Right. I, th I think both OPA and FISA will have somewhat of a budget surplus again this year. Um, we are constantly working with OMB, both agencies, to try and get the numbers right. Um, OMB doesn't like to give extra money to agencies that won't be used either because they'd like to use it at other places. Um, so OPA will have a larger surplus in its budget um, because there was money there for city time, maintenance, and support. The responsibility for city time, maintenance, support has been transferred almost completely to FISA. So OPA will give a, be able to um, give a significant amount of money back. However, for next fiscal year and future years, fiscal years, we're working with OMB to try and get the, the number correct. If you can brief the, provide an answer to the City uh, Council Finance Department and my committee just about how much you expend to have surplus and, and your 
uh, how, how much you, ch you will be choosing to reduce your budget between the current proposal for the preliminary budget and the final budget. We're happy to provide that. Thank you. Um, with regard to uh, cost overruns, capital cost overruns, the city has a history of making a contract with somebody. So let's say we agree to pay somebody a dollar for to wax uh, law school again for for a magic acorn or for 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 black for 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 the, for, for the magic acorn, and we're going to give them a dollar. The city has a tendency of saying we'll pay a dollar for that magic acorn, and then somehow ending up. Uh, because of whatever uh, additional cost there were for transporting that magic acorn, we now end up paying $1.60. And while on that scale it's okay, but when we're talking about a billion instead of 1.6 billion instead of 1 billion, um, that is a problem. And uh, historically, uh, OPA and, and FICE have had the issue of city time, which was originally contracted for 63 million and eventually hit 700 million. Um, are there any current contracts that you have within your two agencies? that are currently overrunning their original uh, contract bid? I'm happy to say no. Oh, wow, that is absolutely uh, great. Um, one concern I have is just with regard to city time. Uh, the final cost to city time was about 135 million to 186 million. Is that 134 to, uh, to 186 million? Do you have an exact figure on that yet? I don't, and, and that's if, Sure. Uh, on the on the back. record, we can get back. Uh, get back. I, I don't have that number, but I, I can certainly check it and get back to you. Uh, and that was after we received the repayment of 500 million. But so, based on our numbers, it's somewhere between 134 and 186 million. I'd love to find out what that exact number is. So that that's that's the sticker price. And so it appears that we have. FISA has an expense budget for 26, fiscal year 2016 for $10 million for the city time system maintenance, and OPA's budget also has an additional $10 million, and that's on the expense side. And then on the capital side, um, we are borrowing in order to spend another $6.4 million to expand city time, which takes us to another $26.4 million on top of the hundred and Thirty-four to one hundred and eighty-six million dollars we've already spent. Um, a, a couple of points that, that you may like to address: the ten million dollars or, or close to it for OPA, most of that will not be spent. Um, as I mentioned before, the the money, the, the responsibility for maintenance support of, of city time has moved to FISA. So um, when we get back to you with the money that might be going back of the surplus. The, the significant portion will be that city time nine point something million dollars. So uh, that there's not a duplication. There's not 10 million at FISA and 10 million at OPA. The 10 million at OPA is going away for city Okay, time. so that, that is $10 million we can give back to the general fund. Or close to it, yes. Um, and the 6.4 million you mentioned, that's city time has been operational for a number of years now. There is a normal upgrade and replacement cycle for hardware and software. What that $6.4 million in capital fund is earmarked for is hardware and software upgrades or replacements of things that have aged out um, in the city time system. So that's not new development costs or implementation costs. That's part of the normal cost of running a system long term. Um, but it, it, they are, those costs are eligible for capital, so they're in the capital budget, the $6.4 million. Can you break down the 6.4 between uh, hardware and software costs? Um, I can't right now, but I can, I can get back to you with, with that information. And is this being paid to a vendor or is this being paid to city employees to update the code for city time? Well, it, it, it's capital money. It has to be a vendor. The, it's a hardware manufacturer or a software manufacturer, so it would be a vendor. With regard to the so, so uh, I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say, and I think uh, and, and most in your staff would be surprised if I, if I did not say that uh, if we were to, I don't think we should buy a new city time, but this is an example where if we were using free and open source software, um, we would actually own the software and we'd be able to make modifications to it without having to go back to the same vendor anytime we want to make changes. Um, but. Uh, and, and so how is the $10 million in the FISA budget 
for maintenance different than the 6.4 uh, in the capital? Um, there's, there's the maintenance portion where we keep the equipment, we keep the hardware and software, but there's an annual fee to the vendor um, for hardware or software maintenance. For normal upgrades, for new versions of the software, to make sure that we get bug fixes, to make sure that if anything goes wrong with the hardware, um, we, we're not charged for it, its repair. So most of that $10 million is for hard, normal hardware and software maintenance for the traditional, and, and as, as you pointed out, City Time was built on the old parati paradigm of systems where you buy the computer equipment and keep it in your, in your offices, where you buy licenses for the software and you pay a vendor to build something. And unfortunately, all of those have associated maintenance costs that are ongoing. And the vast majority of that 10 million is normal hardware and software maintenance for an operational application. I, I guess for me it's just a little frustrating because in the private sector, we, we buy a computer. We own the computer. We don't have to keep paying the company we bought our computer from for the privilege of owning the computer. And most of them we can buy with a support contract up front. And then after that, when I, when I, when I buy Microsoft Windows to run my computer, if I choose to purchase it, or Microsoft Office, I don't then have to say, okay, I spent $150 on Microsoft Office, but in order to have the privilege of continuing to use Microsoft Office after I've already purchased it, I now have to pay another $15 a year just for the purpose of, of running it on my computer after I've already paid for it once. Yes. So to the ex is there any opportunity to renegotiate the, the city time contract to make sure it's more favorable to the city? Um, the, the city, there's a, a number of individual contracts. So the, the short answer is yes. We can always negotiate with, with, the, with the vendors for better deals. Um, again, it's the old paradigm of doing things. The vendor's business model in many, case, many cases is built on those maintenance charges. So they're very reluctant to set a precedent where they're giving any customer a much better deal because that word will get out. So yes, we will try. Um, and I was always hope for success. With regard to the alternate data center funding, the capital plan includes $33.2 million for FISA's alternate backup data center scheduled for to be committed in fiscal year 2017. Can you provide details on this? And last year was testified that it was challenging to move all the data to the cloud because of the variety of platforms your programs ran on because your payroll systems ran on a mainframe computer. Uh, is there a plan to, to modernize? And just by way of background, in the private sector at least, um, we pay by cycles for computers. So if you're gonna go to the EC3 cloud or the Amazon, this is what you get for electing a software developer. But anyway, um, we pay based on bandwidth and computer usage. So you can actually throw an entire server in the cloud and pay for the fact that you're leasing the hard, hard drive space. And then if something goes wrong, you scale up the uh, virtual server almost immediately, and it goes from a dormant server sitting in a closet that doesn't do anything and doesn't really cost you more than pennies a month or pennies a day to a full-fledged server. And uh, at that point, you're paying as if it, it is an operational server. And then as soon as you're done with the crisis or emergency, you're able to scale it back down. But because you're not using it for active queries, you're paying much less. Um, a couple parts to your question. First, the alternate data center. FISA's disaster recovery uh, plan has been refined since the last time the hearings were held. FISA was originally going to be um, a co-owner of the alternate data center in New Jersey with DOIT, the Department of Information Technology. That's changed. DOIT is now going to be completely in charge of that site. And FISA is going to be using it on a limited basis um, for disaster recovery. Um, so that 33 million dollars in capital that you mentioned before, uh, Councilman, will not be going to the alternate data center. At least a large portion of FISA's needs <laughs> won't be served by the alternate data center. So that plan will probably change um, over the next year or so of how and where we will be citing disaster recovery. Um, the other point you mentioned about using the cloud for disaster recovery is something I'm a very big supporter of. Um, 
And that can and will be done for all of the systems that Pfizer runs that are not mainframe based. Um, we've done some research and because so many of our core systems like PMS and portion of FMS are based on the mainframe, you can't get a, a cloud-based disaster recovery um, plan put in place. They're just not set up for that. The, the mainframes are not, don't lend themselves to sitting, waiting to be used. So part of Pfizer's overall strategy is to eventually evolve off of the mainframe completely, and that's one of the issues that we would avoid, the ability to have, to be cloud-based if we don't have the mainframe. Um, and if I may, the payroll management system, which is the biggest application we have running on the, on the mainframe now, what Pfizer and OPA have been doing over the last couple of years is carving off pieces of functionality off of the existing payroll management system and putting them into systems like NICAPS and CityTime that the city runs on non-mainframe platforms. And the hope is, because PMS is over 30 years old, the hope is to carve down PMS to its, its core kernel of functionality so that it can be replaced much more easily than building a massive new system, and that new system would be based on a different platform other than the mainframe. So that's our, our strategy for PMS going forward, and we're actively involved in doing that. So PMS is on the mainframe, and what else? PMS is on the mainframe, a portion of FMS is on the mainframe. Um, the, work, the, workers comp. the workers compensation the system, pension. and the pension payroll management system. Um, so it won't be easy, to, and those are all very complex, very big systems. It won't, we can't just say we'll be off the mainframe in three months or six months, but that is the strategy. And PMS is the biggest of those systems, and we're working on that one first to replace it and move it away from the mainframe. We, we are a city that plans five years ahead. I wish we planned further ahead than five years. Uh, it, do you have a five-year plan to, or end proposal for capital or uh, to, to transition away from PMS, FMS, workers, comp, and PPMS on a mainframe system? And do you have estimates as to how much you believe that will start, that will cost? Um, I don't have a specific time frame. Five years seems like an unreasonable amount of time. Although, as a technologist, you know, it's, it's incredibly difficult to forecast technology 18 months out, let alone five or more years out. Um, but, but the goal is to use software as a service as much as possible, to use the cloud as much as possible, to every time a new application comes, comes around or an application has to be upgraded or updated, to take a look at options, to not just build it the way we always have in the past by hiring a vendor and having it custom made and buying our own computers and storing them and having backups, but to move into the 21st century, realize we're 15 years in, it's time for us to, to speed up our pace, but to, to move with the evolving technology climate and to take advantage of the savings that are associated. And, and I, I just want to be very clear for, for you and also anyone watching, uh, Free Libre and open source software is a license. Uh, it isn't a specific vendor. It can be written by city employees, which is my preference, but it can also be written by vendors. The only difference is that if you don't like the vendor, you get to keep your code after you fire the vendor. And often when you're dealing with that type of code base, there are other vendors who can step in and work with it because generally there's many vendors working with it. So uh, with regard to the types of products we're talking about, uh, P the PMS workers comp and PPMS, there are other cities that are dealing with this. There's about 300 other cities facing these challenges. There's a federal government, there's 50 state governments, all of them trying to deal with this. So um, would you explore working on creating joint contracts and joint code bases with them so that we change the model from it being a vendor that gets paid $700 million to build one thing for one city and then resells that same code base to everybody else versus taking those profits away and replacing that with cost savings for governments so that we're not all paying for the same product that the people have to pay for over and over again. Absolutely, I would be an enthusiastic supporter of that kind of uh, joint consortium with other governments. With regard to FMS, FMS is made by CGI. CGI makes other products. Um, could there be a different timeline with FMS in particular, since I think this is one of the last mainframe cities left uh, to work with, FM, with, with CGI to 
adopt their more modern products. I believe the CGI took the FMS code base and um, is reselling it under a different name in other locations, and we, including in the federal government, and we're one of the uh, last ones left using the old code base, so it may be um, something where that might be one of the easiest places to move. And actually, we've, we've done so for the accounting portion of FMS has moved off the mainframe and is based on a Unix system. So we've already done about half of, half of what, what you're, you're suggesting. And with regard to FMS, the capital plan currently includes a commitment for $4.1 million. What are we going to use that for? It, it's, it's a combination of, of upgrades and refreshes of the hardware and software, but also the, um, the pay information portal, new functionalities being put in. Um, there's e-signature functionality being done for W-9 forms. Um, and we're in the planning stages of, of some software upgrades that'll happen next spring. So that f the $4.1 million is for a number of different items. Does any of that spend, pay for FMS leaving the mainframe so that we can get them into the cloud where they are for so many other cities and states and localities? Not yet, but, but again, I, I, we, we will. Uh, um, with regard to um, city time, uh, has the Board of Elections gone on to city time yet? They have. Are there any outstanding city agencies that aren't on city time? Um, all of the mayoral agencies are on city time. There are some elected officials that are not as of yet, although some elected officials are. Which elected officials are on city time and which ones aren't? Um, the controller's office is on city time. The DA's offices are on city time. A, I believe the Manhattan Borough President is in process of going on. Um, a couple of the public administrators. Uh, how much would it cost for the city council to go on city time? And could the city council actually go on city time? <laughs> um, the short answer is yes, we would welcome you on to city time. I believe there's already been discussions with council staff about moving on to city time. With regard to NICAPS, has DOE been fully incorporated into NICAPS? Yes, they have. Great. With regards to your contracts budget, um, OPA's fiscal 2016 contracts budget totals approximately $10.9 million for 12 contracts. Uh, what percentage of these contracts will be issued to minority and women business enterprises? I have the number for that. For both FISA and OPA, if possible. It's, it's um, ab about 15% to minority and women businesses. And do you have a, uh, a goal to get to a higher number than that? Yes, we are working with MOX. Um, and we are committed to increasing the number of minority and women vendors that we use both at FISA and OPA. I'd like to uh, thank you for uh, your exhausted testimony and having the answers to all our questions and your commitment to provide answers to the questions that we're not able to answer and also your commitment and vision for a future and planning five years out. Uh, I'm, I'm very pleased to have had you all here today. Thank you for joining us. At this point, I will uh, recess the uh, Committee on Governmental Operations until 1115 when we will hear from the Department of Records and Information Services. Thank you.